Hosanna. It's wonderful to be at the home tribe of Bibles for the World. Bible for the World. My whole life, I've been a pastor in Colorado Springs in the U.S. As a pastor, I've been privileged to do conferences, Bible conferences for pastors in many places around the world. But of all the places I've been and all the ministries that I've seen, there's one special place in my heart. So grateful for and praise God for Bibles for the world. Bible for the world, Nathan, but he didn't come along to Kathilane. For me to be with you today, well, I feel like I have come to a land of spiritual giants. In Colorado Springs, I work for a U.S. congressman who oversees the whole. Uh, area of Colorado Springs. And this morning I greet you on behalf of Congressman Lamborn. Congressman Lam Lamborn Lamborn um, Lamborn He is an advocate for religious freedom all throughout India. The thing I most love about your tribe and Bibles for the World. for the World, is the way that you collaborate with other ministries. Right now. Bibles for the world is distributing uh, Iranian Bibles in Turkey. Bible for the world in Turkey, Turkey, Rama, Iran, Turkey, Bible is in Turkey. Bibles for the world is distributing the Word of God in uh, Vietnam. Vietnam, how Bible for the world is not just taking the Word of God in Bible is in Turkey. And I don't know of any other ministry that has such a big heart and open arms. To reach to many other Christians. Tribalism may be a problem in different parts of the world, but among you, there is no tribalism because you love everyone. So I'm harsak na tukabu kabu bianawa. And thank you for welcoming me even this morning. Boy to puna nang ibaya ni lumi puni milog bega ni lumi wabuti kalong tasyet siyaman. My friend Pastor Siju is with us from Chandigarh. Aron cha tap Siju Chandigarh po pa ahun pui le komen long tuwabil po kanya. Earlier this week we had a conference that finished with 250. Church planting pastors. And hundreds of pastors went home with the Gospels of John, New Testament, even the full Bible. Mitam takel su sanjin shas han bu malle he Bible hai soi kirin inten kim takinan kiu kola. Simply because of this tribe and this village, and you are such a blessing to so many. So my poor poor Munasan, so namni hai le, he pule le, he nam le hindi, ah, kai po mani. So Pastor Shiju and myself, we're so glad to be experiencing Manipur for almost the first time. 
Pastor Sisule, Tanpani, Maripura, eh, boy Kanadima Kanhumti, Kan Kanhim, we can him and Emma. And we are especially blessed to enjoy the Palm Sunday procession this morning. Palm Sunday, we took a long way from Mupelka, Nasak Takin, Kay Hom in Hoykan Tierney. We enjoyed it for different reasons, but neither of us have experienced something like that. Uh, in Chandigar, there's not that many Christians. In Colorado Springs, there's not that many palm branches. Colorado Springs, there's not that Today, I want to continue adding to my voice to yours, saying Hosanna to the son of David. I am inviting you to turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 12, please. There's really no other text of scripture that I can preach in this village, in this, and in this tribe, than the Gospel of John. He might not be patient to be thinking. Some two tribes of one leg of one or two, leg of one or two, he wouldn't go and try to forget them. John chapter 12, we find several things that are very familiar to you. So I'm going to show you that he's not the in low hit, in low hit, say the sa in low ball, they have the thing from the Uma. But as we read some selections of this chapter, I would invite you to stand with me with reverence for God and His holy word. This is the value of that perfume would be 300 days wage. Consider all of your annual income. That's the price that she brought to Jesus. She poured out this spice upon his feet. And then she wiped his feet with her hair. Even in that ancient times, the women would wear hair covering. They would never expose their hair to some stranger in a marketplace. But here she is willing to undignify herself to even use her hair to wipe his feet. Mary Rosaline, Ama Antio Tonga, and Zakum Commissary, Sue Christa, Kepula Rotten, Anu Hai, Asamin Kumna, Sukum Hai, any time, a woman. Any time you love Jesus that much, you also are open to criticism. So, one Kopa Nangi, Nangi, Nangi Kayan, is Sue Christa, my pardon, so he said, Na, Ekon, Bakani. People will say, such an expensive gift should have been given to the poor. She gave such a costly gift because she loved so much. Even, even today, people criticize those who love Jesus so much. They call you a fanatic. Your family will just not understand. 
Even the community will criticize your extravagant gift. But we find from this passage of scripture that Jesus is worthy of the very best that we can give. Let me perhaps give an application. There are some in this community who may criticize that you built such a beautiful new church building. Um, if you may, he But isn't Jesus worthy of the very best that we can give? Isu Krista in ene po po senga big in ebos apu no ne. No matter what people may say or how they may criticize. Mita min im am komu fivai senga. We love him because he first loved us. Amana mi fangai legen, ei fangai fe ani ani tat legen. And if he has given us everything. Amain tili kimani peka. We should give him everything. Eni ko in tili kim hei peka pu pe ani. Including the most extravagant gift of love. In contrast, in contrast to this extravagant or costly gift of love, we find a feigned or a hypocritical love. The first example is is Judas himself. Judas was the one who criticized the extravagant gift. Because he was the treasurer, he said, this gift should have been sold and the money used for the poor. He did you he we find that Judas was the treasurer who kept all of the money for the disciples. And even though he said he loved Jesus with his lips, by his actions and by his attitude, he demonstrated that he really only loved himself. A second example for the crowds that praised Jesus. Just like, just like we enjoyed this morning, they were shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But less than one week later, uh, those same voices would be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. In the Old Testament it says, these people draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. This shouting crowd was a feigned lip of exuberance, enthusiasm. But nothing genuine remained. The last, the last example of the feigned love are the rulers of the Jews who said they believed Jesus. But they, were, but they were ashamed to publicly confess him. The Bible says they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And 
the passage of Scripture gives us an example to follow the extravagant love of genuine worship. But it also gives us a warning that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But there's a third kind of love in this chapter. It's the sacrificial love of Jesus. What we first learned about the love of Jesus. Is that it was a prepared or a prophesied love. This, this passage of scripture is fulfilling at least five Old Testament prophecies. Which tells us that the sacrifice of Jesus was not a second plan or a last second thought. From the very beginning, God planned that He would demonstrate His love to us. By sending His Son to be the sacrifice for our sins. Please, please note the first of these prophecies. Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Daniel, Bunku, Sam, Som. Daniel 9, verse 24. Sam, Som, Nepalina. Is a prophecy of 70 weeks. He says there will be 7 weeks, and then 62 weeks, and then 1 last week. Daniel says the reason for this prophecy is to put an end to transgression and to end sin and then to anoint a Messiah. Daniel in Hafta Hafta Sarile, Som Rupadile, Alibun Tatadin, Aul Nasansu, Isu Christa. He says after 69 weeks that the Messiah would be a total 490 years. So the 69 weeks until the Messiah was 483 years. So the 69 weeks and when the Messiah came, it would be exactly 483 years. That time began with a pronouncement to rebuild Jerusalem. That happened in March of 445 BC, before Jesus came. BC. 445. By the Jewish accountant, that will be completed on April 6th. Of 32 AD. That was the exact day that Jesus entered Jerusalem. A man named Sir Robert Anderson calculated these dates. The two Sir Robert Anderson to It was fulfilled to the very day. Jesus also fulfilled Psalm 118. 
Isu Krista Jansang number sale so parit na pong ang supuiti nga. This was a psalm that was sung during the Passover. Tekan roi te anki antre huna sa susan sula to ansak na kana. People were making their pilgrimage and ascending up to Jerusalem for Passover. They would sing psalms like Psalm 113 or Psalm 118. When they said Hosanna to the son of David. David na upako makosa na tiyan ang kekso maka. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lalpa binga, lalpa binga hung sa hamatay tiyan ang sakupa. They were fulfilling Old Testament prophecies. So ang hindi ko alam kung may pumpo ng sa sukuiting na naman eh. As a demonstration that Jesus' love was a prophesied love. Isu Krista ng legend ng mga itapa. Hindi ko mga ita. He also fulfills Zechariah 9, verse 9. Zechariah 9, verse 9. That he would, that he would ride on the donkey. Most people expected a conquering king or Messiah to ride on a horse. But this one was a humble one who came on the back of a donkey. But this one was a humble one who came on the back of a donkey. Sabihin itong tetsu mga hongsu, in ngay tong takle, tunoy mong takahungan niti, asok siya nga. But there's another prophecy that he fulfilled. Pilok alokong, sukwiti nga hongsu, ikong.